All right. What's up, traders? Sorry for the delay on uh, starting writing that custom indicator for Trade of Eight, but we're going to go ahead and get started. In this part, we're just going to figure out how to create a new file to start your indicator. So we'll jump right into that and um, see how that's done. So I recorded, well, let me go ahead and I was going to say I have been trying to record for the last couple days, and I had about 30 minutes of footage. Unfortunately, I, there was a bug in the Trade of Eight uh, template file that gets created for you, but it took me a while to figure out, and I didn't want to do any software edits, so I'm just re-recording this section. But let's jump into it like I promised. We're going to head and... Um, Go to the, so there's two ways to access the Code Explorer. Uh, one way is to click the plus button up here to add a new module. And then you go ahead and choose, uh, let's see, Source Explorer, Code Explorer right here. Oops, and that, uh, I should have dragged that. So that actually creates a new window. But if you had dragged it, like click, hold and drag, you could then place it, you know, anywhere on the screen, but I'm not going to do that. I prefer, oops, I did it for me anyways. I prefer to go to an existing chart. And it's all messed up now. Thank you, Trade of Eight. Yeah, sometimes the UI is messed up like this. Uh, their menu bar here should be aligned with the top and the left, but it's right here. It's okay. We'll quickly refresh. Uh, so on a Mac, it's Command R. On a Windows, I'm sure it's uh, F5 or Control R. Not sure exactly. So we're at two minutes right now, I'm trying to keep it under 10, and I don't want to do any kind of software editing or video editing. So we'll wait for this to load, and here we go. So what I like to do is open a chart with an existing indicator. And if you don't have an, an indicator on a chart, you can just go ahead and you know pick any old indicator, it doesn't matter. Anyone that allows you to view the source and then you click um, the pencil and paper icon. And so uh, once you get here, you'll be in the Code Explorer or Source Explorer. What you'll need to do next and on the file, new, and then just name your file, name it something unique with the approved characters. So I'm just call mine LC for Let's Code, uh, demo do three, because I've already done one and two. All right, so at this point, uh, what Trade of Eight gives you is this template to start uh, ind an indicator. Uh, the default indicator code uh, basically prints a simple moving average um, as a single plot. Now the bug that um, is in here that took me a while to figure out sadly, is that you have to change the, the double dots on the required statements on line one and two to be single dots. And then um, we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll close it. So click the X on the top right and cancel this because we don't want the Bollinger Band. Now, now the next part is to find that indicator that you just created. So we will have to search for demo, and it doesn't exist. Well, the reason is the code actually has not been loaded or compiled. Sometimes you know you can either do a another command R or a refresh of the screen, and or just close out, you know, log out of the the platform and log back in, and it should be there. Should be is the operative word. Words. I guess that's two words. All right, now we click on this uh, indicators. We'll search for it and we'll find demo. Oh, it's still not there. Um, it's under moving averages. I guess it was not named. And so how did I know it was under moving averages? Well, LC underscore demo 03 was the name we gave it. If we go ahead and go into that file, um, well, let me go ahead and just show you what it looks like. So. It's just another, I had, I had another moving average, exponential one, but let me modify this demo one and make it uh, purple, make it thick enough to see, and 
there we go. So that is the, the indicator that the default template gives you when you create a new uh, indicator file. Let's go ahead and modify that. And so the first modification we'll do to close out this part is to just rename it. So before we actually get into any logic of writing that um, prior bar uh, retrace line that we had talked about in the intro, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about some of the aspects of a uh, indicator file. So the first two lines in this, you see there require statements, which means you're importing functionality from a different file. And uh, the reason we had to fix the double dots to a single dot is because the, it's a relative path versus, well, I mean, it's a, you were looking in a subdirectory or you were going up one directory and then going down a different directory. Uh, it's more of a Unix pathing uh, kind of thing that we won't get into too much right now, maybe later. But um, that's uh, basically the fix for that. The next part is the name of your class. So we gave the name uh, lc underscore demo 03.js. And the, the trade of eight platforms, uh, Code Explorer kind of extrapolated that, took the file name and templatized it and just put it under name, description, and calculator. Um, the only thing that's, well, the important things to keep the same are the ones that aren't in double quotes. So line four and line seven or 17 need to match. But you know you can keep it LC demo 03 or you can name it whatever you want really as long as it's a valid naming scheme. I like to name it in a camel case system where you know the LC is the first word so you lowercase that and then you capitalize the next one. So we'll just call it LC demo um, yeah demo 03 that's fine. So now we've changed that what we have to do is make sure that the calculator property right here is also that same name. And so that's important. The next, uh, okay, so going back to the, the calculator, so that we've got this name. And a calculator or the um, indicator, the main class that defines what an indicator does in the trade of a platform is the class that is referenced by the calculator property. In here, there'll be three methods. And um, you can find more information like documentation by going to community and GitHub repository here. I won't uh, go into that too much right now, but we will reference it later uh, in a different part just so that we can kind of understand what the API for the different things we'll be doing, you know, the method signatures and what's available to us. So now, um, so there's three methods that you, you can override. You don't have to override two of them. One of them you do. Uh, init is optional, so if that wasn't there, it's fine. But in this case, it has to be there because we're using the SMA. Um, we're using this SMA function that we uh, we got by importing uh, this file here on line two, and then we're reading in the props, which is part of the params property. So this is if you want to have user customized values. Right now, it's a number, a period of uh, fourteen. And um, so that's what it's reading because the simple moving average takes a period of, you know, the look back period to consider. So in it, you know, it could be optional. You can also do additional things here. Like if you want to keep flags, you know, like uh, um, flag, we can say set the flag default value to true. And then in here we can say if, you know, if this dot flag is equal to true, set it to false. So this doesn't really do much except you know flip the switch. So this is one way to write it. There's many ways to write this. Um, but I'll go ahead and do this. Else this dot flag uh, equals true. So that's one way. Another way, I'll just go ahead and write it because that's bothering me, is that you just do the the not sign, which is exclamation point. So it just flips the, the switch or the flag. Again, this is you know meaningless right now, but that's what you would kind of do in the init. The map is the most important uh, method in your, your calculator class or your, your indicator class. And it takes three, or you can have up to three uh, arguments 
D is the first one, which is the input uh, bar, basically. The next one is the index. And the last one is the, the list or array of uh, previous bars. You can, the first two or the first ones required, the last two are optional, depending if you need them or not. So you'll see sometimes the method signature for map could look like this. It could also be like the default. And of course you can name it whatever you want. You can name the D to be data and I to be index and history to be like uh, items or bars, whatever you want to call it. It's up to you. But I'll go ahead and keep it to the standard convention of that. And so D is the bar and the value. In this case, the case is the closing price. But you can also just take the SMA of the high of each bar only. And so, or the close or the low. So there's a couple uh, options there. Um, and the last optional method you can use is filter. Not the last, but the other possible method you can override. And filter, what it'll take is the return is the D actually. This D is not the same as this D because this D and map is the, um, the, the bar, the current bars open high, low and close and other things that you can use. Whereas this D is the data object that's returned by map. Um, so in this case, we're just returning the simple moving average value. And so here, um, I guess to be more correct, we would have to, yeah, we'll, we'll go into this later. It's not really necessary, but sometimes you'll see the filter there. Uh, it's just a way of saying, you know, if I return nothing, don't display anything on the chart or just filter out um, the, you know, from the, the calculator, just don't do anything with it, basically. Now the um, beginning of line 17, doing module.exports, what you're doing is you're exporting properties related to this particular class. And this is important because this is what is actually allows you to hook into the Trade of 8 platform API to let it know about this class that you've written here. So you say, this is the name of my class, and this is a string, so you can kind of name it you know, in a string way where it's free form. And I could say demo03. And then in the description, this will actually show up in, which is weird, this is the name that'll actually show up in the list of indicators. So if I happen to just name it so that it's, it's uniquely identifiable, in, identifiable versus the name, let's see, I call it demo03.01 for the build number, right? Or something like this, like version 01. Um, and you'll we'll see that in a second, which one actually shows up, whether it's the name or description. Uh, params. It's just the user um, user definable inputs. In this case, we only have one, which is the period. And the default value is of 14, but the user can change that. Tags is another one. And I like to keep my tags up near the description because I think that's metadata that doesn't change very often. Um, it could be below calculator, actually. What tags is, it, it puts it in a folder your indicator into folders so you can actually find it. And so let's put it under, let's code. Um, and then we'll, you can put multiple ones. So you can put say demo and I'll just throw in my other one. The reason why you want to do this is if your indicator kind of encompasses multiple um, domains, you know, of sorts, whether it's like moving averages and volume and, and other things. One or two is usually good, three might be overkill. Uh, we talked about pram, schema styles is just a way to put default uh, colors and line styles that you can do. But that's basically it for you know this walkthrough of what you get and also an overview of the what's in an indicator and what's required and what's not. We'll go ahead and actually one last thing I wanna show you is the console input. So if you click view here and enable console output and then clear the console, after you make a change to the file and you save it, so control S or command S, 
you'll see that the console down here at the bottom compiled, you know, all your all the code, all you know, the built-ins like right here, and also your custom ones. Like I have all these LDT underscore custom ones. If you don't see any red lines, that means it succeeded. If you see red lines or, or lines that are colored red, for instance, I'll, I'll put that error in there where I'll put the dot. If I save that and it recompiles, what you'll see, you'll notice if I scroll from the bottom back up is that it gives you this error right here that it cannot find tools pre-def from, you know, in this, in the file, the JS file that we have. And so to, and that's how I found out the bug is um, reading through this. And to be honest with you, before filming that last, uh, with well, this episode a couple times now, I did not use console output. Um, but console output is cool because you can do a few other things, and we'll go into that at a future date. So it looks like everything's good now. And what you'll want to do each time is maybe clear console, especially if you're trying to debug so that you can kind of see what's going on. Like I made the change there and saved it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and X out and let's remove this and let's see if we could find it again because we had moved it to a different channel. Let's code. And we could see that now in one of the tags folder, it's under let's code. Uh, let's see, that one's too long. It's probably under demo as well because that's another directory that we had categorized or tagged it in. Um, and you could see that it's less code dash demo zero three view zero one, which I believe is the description. Not sure why it doesn't use the name, but it uses description. Uh, and the reason this matters is because you you want to make sure your name wherever you put it is something that people can understand and find. Um, let's see, and that is it for this. All right, we'll see you in the next episode.